in March. Uh, the reason why I remember it was shortly after the floods that were in Cradock. We met at the Cradock Community Hall where they usually have the afternoon spans on Sundays because what was playing in a band. Afternoon span is where we as young teenagers used to spend afternoon, our afternoons there dancing and jiving because um, the musicians' band, there was a band that was always playing on Sunday afternoon. Um, firstly, I would say it was uh, because he was making music and he had good manners. I think that is the things that attracted me to him. Well, um, he saw me in the hall, I presume. And then he, after he played, he followed me and he was like, asked me to be his girlfriend. And I sort of like, was not sure do I really want this. And I let him wait for a while, I think for a week or so. But he didn't stop, he just like followed me and asked me. And eventually I said, yes, we can be boyfriend and girlfriend. We loved each other in the first place. Uh, and I remember at one stage he came to see me with his friend. So while I was taking them halfway home, there was a clinic nearby uh, our home. So when we got there by the clinic, there was a wall there where we used to stand and you know talk. So while we were standing at that wall, he said to his friend that he is getting married to me that evening and that his friend is the witness and and we laughed because we were both children and I did not know that he was serious in that. I was uh, 15. And he? And he at that time he was 18 um, but then I fell pregnant at the age of 16 and he was 19. I remember a lot of things on my, on my wedding day. Firstly, my husband was jokey also. Uh, Ford was very jokey. And um, the day of our wedding, I remember uh, him whispering in my ear saying that we have long been married. We are just like doing this now officially to please the elderly, but me and you were long been married. And we laughed. Uh, I remember the time when I was taken to my in-laws for our traditional wedding. Um, it was like, yeah, it was very nice for me because we were used to each other. We knew each other, we were friends. We, it, it, it was like, like he said to me that we were just formalizing the whole thing now. Ford was a, Ford was a very good husband, firstly. And as a father, he was also a good father for his children. As I have said earlier, me and him were like friends. He was a brother, he was like a brother to me. Also, he was like a father figure for me because I could run to him at any time with anything and he will always be there for me. That is the relationship that we had. Ford loved his children. He loved them so much. I remember um, when Dorothy was still very young. <clears throat> I wanted to go and register Dorothy with my maiden name. And then he said to me, no, Dorothy can't be. I'm a clean. Dorothy is a Kalata, so we have to wait to register her. She is my child. And he loved her. He even called her Nana. But after we got married, we registered her. 
and we got Lucano, and he and Lucano were buddies. He really loved his children. Pot could bath his children. He could make them uh, food. He never got tired of his children. He always wanted to be with his children. He was a very good father. Your father was like very happy when you were born, Lucan. I remember the time when I was still pregnant with you. We had this thing that, um, what are you going to do for if this child is a, is a, a girl? And he was like, sure that this child is not going to be a girl. It's going to be a boy. And what excited him most is that this child is going to be born in the same month that he was like born. And unfortunately for him, the child was not born on the 5th of November, but on the 18th of November. But he was very excited. He was very, very, very excited. And he loved Lucano a lot. Ford was also excited there when I was pregnant with Tuman. And very funny, he could like say things in a, in a, in a way, but then it happens as he have said, because I was like thinking that I'm going to have a boy again because of how we got children at home. And then Ford said to me, no, this is going to be a girl. And this girl is going to look like you. It's going to be light like you. And it can't be a boy because it's me and you who are the men of this house. So really God really granted him what he wanted. What oh, with his grandfather were like, you know, father and son. He had a very good relationship with his grandfather. Um, uh, Tato used to spoil him a lot and I remember also when I got there and I was introduced to him as Ford's wife, he was very, very, very happy because that I am like his son's wife. He had a very, very good a relationship, you no know, Tato. Where, uh, wherever Tato wanted anything, he will only remember one person in the house, and that was Ford. How did he take Tato's death? Yo, he was very heartbroken. How old was Ford when Tato died? Well, <laughs> he had a wife already, me, I was there, and uh, it was in 1982. Three, what was about 20, 27, 26, 27. He took it very, very hard. He took it very, very, very hard. Um, I remember one evening, the, the, the evening when, 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 when Tato like, passed away, people came to the house and uh, I was trying to like to comfort him as a man in 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 our culture man does not cry but Ford cried over his his, his grandfather Utato umlilele nyan he cried I remember Tato's funeral uh, because it was new for me to see uh, a political uh, funeral there was a lot of people, and there was a lot of freedom songs that were sang. And it's where I saw a little bit of uh, relief from from Fort. When the people were singing freedom songs, and the program that was originally made was changed coming from 
the ANC that time, I could see the, re the relief that he had. Uh, he started to, you know, to, to, to recover from the sadness that he had. Pot grew, he grew up in, 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 in politics because Utato, who raised him, was, the, was involved within the ANC and he was the general secretary of the ANC, you understand? And one other thing, when Ford was born, 1956, Utato was involved in the Rivonia trial. And uh, it's when the connection between him and Ford came, because U, U Sinsiki, Ford's mother, went to visit Utato in, 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 in jail. And, and, and Utato heard that Ford was born. Usinziki told me that immediately when Tato heard that, he instructed a priest from his church to, to, to go and baptize Ford. And Tato gave him the name Ford and he instructed the priest to take Usinziki home so that the child can go and uh, stay with him in Credoc. And, I, and, and then since he told me that December that year, I think the, the charges were withdrawn against Utato and then he came home. So from prison, Tato knew that a son was born for him. That is why he took him. Uh, Fort got his name when Tato was in, in, in Fort Prison in Johannesburg. And uh, when I asked oh, since he, why would Tato give the child the name of Ford, and then Sinsiki said no. The name was not given to him Fort the prison, but the name was given to him Fort as a, a protector for the family. In Tosa they call it that Ingaba. Ingaba is now a fort where people could hide when danger comes. So that is how we got the name. I think because Utato was arrested in front of them, most of the other things, of the, the security police used to come to the house and Fortaland them was affected because this, when, when the police came to, to, to arrest Tato, the whole house will be disrupted and it, it affected him in, the, in that manner. He grew up in that. It was preached in the church. It was his father who was involved. Um, the Kumbola Sinsiki, uh, his mother to told me one day uh, that Ford used to sing when the police come to arrest Dato. So it means that he was also like maybe not trying to cry or something like that. Mm. Matthew and Ford were like very close, very, very, very good. The other one could not spend the day without seeing the other one. They met in 1983. When, Fort, when Matthew came to Cradock to become the principal of Semka, the secondary school. Um, Fort was long looking, you know, for people that he can connect with so that they can try and organize something in Cradock because I remember when he taught in, in, in Dimbaza, that was between 1979 and 1980, he used to be arrested there, detained. And when I asked him, why must he always be detained there? And then he said, no, there was uh, uh, people that he was meeting with trying to set up um, a funeral thing, like in Kosa, they will say umas nwabane, like a funeral um, 
thing for the for the black people. And I said, why would they arrest you if this thing if involved funeral and everything? He said, no. But they do arrest us for things like that. In the meantime, he was busy having meetings with the ex-political prisoners that were in Robben Island that were went and dumped in the uh, homelands. So he was having meetings with with those people. That is why he got detained. So when he came back to Credoc after your birth, Lucano, um, he, 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 he ah, before you, you were born, it was before you were born, he came back to, to thought in Credoc. So he, 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 he wanted to set up also an underground organization with the people in Credoc, but he could not find the, the right people, then Matthew came. So they clicked the same time when Matthew came to the school. That is how they met. The first meeting uh, with Matthew was held in, in my room and for in your father's room, in our room actually. It was held there for the first time because I remember Ford came back from school and said to me, Namonde, can you please um, like not go and sleep early today because I'm going to have a meeting there. And I said, a meeting? Why with whom? And then he said, no, with who, who, who put me. And then I said, no, it's fine. And then, and then I went and I sat with my mother-in-law. So they had the meeting there. I did not know what they were talking. Their friendship attract a lot of attention from the police. And from, from, from for a lot of people, because um, when they just started their friendship and it was the time when Utato also passed. So both of them were like organizing the the, the funeral thing. So it did attract the attention of the police a lot. Firstly, they organized the youth to be disciplined. Ne? And they spoke to the youth and told them how important is it to go to school and being educated. Secondly, they organized the community itself to stand up and fight for their rights. And the community really uh, listened to them because there was a problem of sliding scales on rentals and they organized people to fight against that and fortunately they knew what they were doing. They, they exactly knew what they were doing because oh, it was like Credo was a very quiet in town where the white people could just do as they wish. Uh, people were likely the, 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 they were locking the houses. If you don't pay your rent, they will come and put you out of the house and lock the house. They will cut the waters and do all those type of things. And when Matthew and, and, and your father came, people gained their uh, humanity, you know, and they started to stand up against those things. So that is how I like understood their stand politically. The formation of Cradora was around about that time. Because why Cradora was formed is when the new houses were built in Credoc, the new area called uh, Kalata, a location. Like there, the houses were all the same. Four-roomed house, just a basic, like, four-roomed house. Uh, but if you earn so much, then you will pay a lot of money. And your next door will pay a little bit of money. So the people stood 
together against that, and they 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 they, they fought for that, and that is why then they decided to form Ikradora, a Credo Residents Association, so that people can stand together to fight against those high rentals. They were like going around the small towns around Credoc, uh, organizing uh, people to form e the organizations that can affiliate under the UDF. And by so doing that, they had to report weekly to the branch, UDF branch in Port Elizabeth. That is what they were doing. So we know at this time that um, they were being followed. We know that the, the, the Goniwe house, the telephone was bugged and they had to travel to Port Elizabeth on a weekly basis. Um, what were your feelings about about this thing after Uventer had said what what he had said to you? How were you feeling about the fact that they had to travel on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? Uh, we, no, I was really uh, having a, a big, big, big fear because. Uh, of the threats and the thing that was said to Vendor. So I was really scared. As a result, uh, at one stage, I mentioned it to uh, 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 Fort Uti. Why can't the people from PE rotate this thing one, uh, maybe one week, emitting be in Credoc and the other week in Port Elizabeth. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, maybe they could not do it or uh, they were planning of doing it. I don't know, but I, I, I had a great fear for his life. I remember who Fort said one day, uh, hey, um, I am very scared now, ne? because we don't know what happened to these uh, three men. Did they really skip the country or what is going on? And I fear now, I think these people are like out there to, to, to kill us, but we, I will not stop working for the people because of that. I will continue. Uh, and I was really scared. I was so scared. Even Matthew himself was a bit worried about the traveling to, to, to PE every week. But what could we do then? Because this man was dedicated in what they were doing. And Gela Klaisha Kwa Kwa Mwenali, he army at the time when that army came in, it was like they closed all areas in, in Lingalese with e pop wire, and helicopters were on the air shouting the names of Matthew Koniwe. Fort Kalata, who can't give people of Lingalisha water, who can't give them houses. People should not, should not follow them. People should not listen to them. And um, a lot of people were likely detained and from the, the youth, the young people were detained. Uh, Ufot no Matthew, uh, at that time, they were also taken in, but they released 
they released them that very same day. I was very scared. I don't want to lie. I was scared and fearing for his safety. Katataku was scared he's going to be killed or detained or charged with something. I was really scared. The Tuesday club week, <clears throat> you got sick and then Utataku took you to the doctor. And the Wednesday, there was a commemorial meeting of the ANC, a Freedom Charter Day meeting. So they went and they had that meeting. And usually, they used to leave on a Wednesday to attend the UDF meetings in, in, in Port Elizabeth. But that day, they scheduled it for the Thursday. The 27th, because on the 26th they had this meeting of Freedom Charter Day. Uh, it was like normal. We had our meetings. It was a normal thing to have our meetings and all that type of things. But that Wednesday, I did not go to to the meeting because where now you were sick. And then the Thursday morning, uh, Fort woke up as usual and prepare himself because he knew that they were. Uh, going to leave to Port Elizabeth and I was like expecting visitors that were supposed to come and stay with us. A priest from a Baptist church was supposed to come and stay us for, with us for, for the weekend. And by about then, but Matthew came and they left for, 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 for PE. And then we were expecting them to come back that same evening, but they did not come back. Uh, at about 12 midnight that evening, I could not sleep. I woke up and I knocked at this room where that priest was sleeping and I said to him, Mfundis, and then the fundis said, no, ma'am, maybe they decided to sleep over in Port Elizabeth. And I, and I went into my room again. But because I could not sleep, I woke up and I opened up the front door. And usually in our street, ne, the hippos and the van, at that time, they were just driving up and down. But that particular evening, it was quiet, no hippo, no nothing. I stood there on the stoop and I looked down and I looked up. It was quiet. And I went into the house again. I tried to sleep, but I could not sleep. The following morning I woke up and because we were not like working, both me and him, we were like selling Herald at home. And usually the already will do the deliveries to the people who are now our, our regular customers. And the Herald came that morning and Dorothy went and, and, and like deliver the, the newspaper. And then the Friday, the whole day, we don't hear anything. Eventually late that Friday afternoon, I ordered a gas because we were using a gas stove. I ordered a gas and the gas was delivered. And a strange thing happened. The white man who was like delivering the gas, he asked me, where is your husband? And usually when he came, they will never ask about my husband. And that day he asked, where's your husband? And then I said, no, he's not home. But I did not ask him why he's asking that. I just said, no, my husband is not home. And he went. And then later, my brother-in-law, your Uroy came. Uroy at Sisi, Siamba Siofuna Oput Fort. And then I said to him, Why? No, we found U Molly Blackburn. Molly said that they are not there. And we, we went to the police stations and everywhere. We can't find them. Yeah, neighbor, by the nearby towns. 
So we were going now, we're going to, 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 to PE to search. Okay, it was fine. The Saturday morning, the Herald came. And while the Herald, like we were receiving the Herald, they already saw a picture of Matthew's car. And Dorothy said, Ma, Nancy Motoka put Matthew. I could not see anything on that Herald. Nothing. I should I could only see Herald there. The pictures there, I could not see anything. Say, Dorothy, go and deliver the people's papers, man. Ma, put Matthew's car. Dorothy, please, please go. And Dorothy went and she went to deliver the newspapers. But because we have to keep one paper for us. And she said to me, Ma, sit down. And I sit. And she said, I'm trying to show you. This is Put Matthew's car. They said here yeah, in the paper that it's missing. Look at this. And it, then I saw the car. And then, it, and it, but at the same time, I, I did not want to put my mind in that something bad have happened. In the end, and the thing that was only that they are being detained, or I don't know. And but later on that Saturday, I people came to take me up to Matthew's home. When I got there, people were gathered there, and people were crying. I also cried, even though I didn't know why 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 they were crying for. And I, 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 I cried also. And then I heard that they had found Butstello's body and, and Sparrow's body. But till then, I had that hope that Ford and Matthew managed to escape whatever was happening. Until the following week, on the 1st of July, when we were told that their bodies were also found, then I realized that they were also killed. So, for almost five, six days, one had to do about that about. No, bringing us that we need to kill the latash. And I believe in about Swilikili. The reason why in Daniel Fono believe about Swilikili is because I trusted them. And I depended on the braveness. I took them as heroes, and heroes are untouchable. And that is the feeling that I had at that time. But unfortunately. Well, it was like upside down. People were singing, people were crying after their death and so on, until the day of the, of the funeral. Uh, in the on the twentieth of July, um, I remember while we were still waiting for the coffins to come. When you were like, "Ma, I saw Utata in one of those buses. Let's go and get him." At one stage, I wanted like to believe you that you are telling the truth, but because of oh, Ford's brother went and identified him and saw that it was him. So I believe that Ford have passed away. Um, but when we went down to the stadium, the day of the funeral, I can just remember a lot of people that was there and a lot of different flags that was there. I remember seeing the, the Communist Party flag, ANC flags, 
and many many other other flags and a lot and a lot of people i remember Opusa was there i remember reverend kundu was there I remember oh Bishop Bruce Evans um, not really now a lot of things that was said but I remember Kundu is City Pire uh, but in Kwabantu. people must start fighting back. That I can remember. That is the way I have go to a state of emergency because the time while see, we were at the funeral, police, were all over. They were scattered all over. Park when I park, then I say, "Me was done." I be chunging a fair cake here, which one we have. So by the time we came back from the graveyard, state of emergency was already launched. So people would be, there was the police were starting to uh, to arrest people that was coming from the funeral. So I remember that same evening. Umna, we people uh, from the people that was there. They brought the the ANC flag to the house. Apagatato, emongo. We had to take that flag and put it in the flower. Kupelum kube pinin, and take that flag, put it in the, the the flower bin, and put the flower back into the bin again. I, I remember we had we had to hide the flags that were there, and other people had to hide the red flag because they were they they, they wanted the red flag, and it was like police up and down everywhere. People have been arrested. They came to the house, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for Mna, or unfortunately for for Bona, I was like highly expecting. Uh, and there was a lot of people around in the house. So they, they, what their system was like not to arrest a person where, uh, when there is a lot of people around that person. When they pregnant with Tuman, Kaloka was expecting with Tuman at that time. Someone born with Tuman Kaloka. Tumani was born three weeks after the funeral because Tumani was born on the 8th of August 85. Uh, I, I felt very sad because Ford was so much looking forward to see this child. <clears throat> I remember at one stage he was like telling me that we were fortunate with our firstborn was born when you were with your parents and when Ulukani was born <clears throat> we were with my parents and now it's going to be this child is going to be our child because we are on our own now we've got our own house so we are going to deal with it alone and he was really looking forward he was practicing how he's going to do things and what he's supposed to do and all that type of things and <clears throat> I remember when Tumani was like born for a while I could not carry her in my arms because each and every time when I was like taking her into my arms, I could like remember what Ford said, that we are going to have our own baby girl. And he was sure it was going to be a baby girl. And she was like <coughs> the baby girl and he could not see this child. And it really hurts me. Sorry, Lukanya, I didn't want to cry, but <coughs> Do you want to stop for a bit?
Well, when I was younger, um, it never really bothered me that I didn't know my father um, or that I never seen him. Um, what used to bother me was when Mama used to tell stories about him and how we used to be around the house with Dorothy and Nawe. Um, and then I would get jealous, but then I would think, ah, I don't know him, he doesn't know me. Um, and then I grew older and um, I had friends and my friends had their fathers around. Um, and their fathers used to love them a lot. Um, I remember I had a friend that used to stay near um, to our house, um, Aurelien, and Aurelien and her father had a very close relationship, and um, Uncle Clyde was very protective of Aurelien, and I wanted a relationship like that with my father, but I knew that I would never have. And then Umama would tell me stories that Oh, if your father was here, he would spoil you, and he would do this for you. Um, and he was so excited uh, um, when I was pregnant, and how he used to practice going, taking me to the hospital with a baby bag and my suitcase, and bringing you back home. Um, and that used to hurt, thinking that I would never have that experience with my father. Um, I don't know what he looks like except for the pictures that are around in Lin. Um, I hear that I have my father's features. I don't know what his feet look like. I would love to see what his feet look like and compare my toes with his toes and say, you that does your in your knees. I would have loved to be my father's daughter, but I can't be. And I will never be my father's daughter. Um, it's sad and it hurts a lot now that I'm older and I think about it. and. <clears throat> I just don't only think on the things that he is missing out on on me. I'm thinking of the things that I am missing out on with him. Before I never had that. I will never have that. But I not have that. I will never have that. I will never have that. I will never have that. I would love to have that. Um, but I will never have it. When you look at your son and Umama is there as the grandmother, has Ukwazi ever asked you about your father? Uh, what does he know about his grandfather from your side? Um, Umama Ukwazi is a grandmother and a grandmother. Um, I don't think Ukwazi really feels that he he doesn't have a grandfather. He knows that his grandfather died um, a long time ago and that I've never had a father. Um, he asked me, I think he was two years old or three, somewhere there. Um, there's a picture, Erumin Gamama, of... Um, the wedding day 
and he asked me, Mani, who's that with Monde in the picture? And I said, it's your grandmother and your grandfather. And he said, no, I don't have a grandfather. And I said, yes, you do have a grandfather. That's your grandfather. And he asked me where he was. And so I told him that his grandfather died long time ago, even before I was born. And then he said that, so my grandfather is an angel. And I said, yes, my boy, your grandfather is an angel. Is he with God, Marnie? I said, yes, he's with God and Jesus. I said, yes, he's with God and Jesus. So he's protecting me wherever I go, just like God does. And I said, yes, and he will always protect you. So he knows that wherever he goes, his grandfather, that is an angel with God and Jesus, is protecting him and looking after him. Now that I'm older, it's then or it's now that I know what my father did, what he was fighting for. Um, and to me, it shows that he was a, self, a selfless man, that he cared more about the people around him than he did for himself because if he did care only for himself and his family I'm sure that he still would have been a teacher by now and he would have still been alive um, but he cared for other people outside and he cared for their freedom the the opportunity for them to to I would say live like the white people live now, to have what the white people had back then, to have the same rights and the same opportunities. And, and it makes me extremely proud to be called Mdana Rafot. Um, I smile every day when I'm trying to be able to get down, trying to get down, trying to get because and it makes me proud. It, people might make a mockery about it now, but to me, it, it it makes me very, very proud. What I'm trying to say now is that the people who went out there and occupied the positions as a high within law government with NEP is like most of them are very ignorant. And some of them don't want to know what happened in the past. And they don't care about the pain of the people who have lost their loved ones and families back there. All they care about is for themselves and the comfort that they have put themselves in. We are gone. Because <clears throat> many a times we do went out and cry out to the president to the authority out there about pressing charges against these people who have killed our husband. Because it was said back then with TRC hearings or with amnesty hearings that if you did not come out with the full disclosure of what happened, you this possibility of you being charged. And these people who have killed our husband never got amnesty. So I do not understand why can't they be charged for, 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 for what they did, for killing our husbands. They can't press charges against them. We tried many times for that, but it failed each and every time. And it makes me very unhappy because it's 30 years back now 
and we don't hear anything, anything. I remember about two, three years back, investigations were made, but it won't, all went like, like that, nothing happened to it. I do feel very let down. Um, as you know, Mama likes to tell about the past, um, the good and the bad. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the people that she she talked or she talks about um, that are now in, in, in government um, that I see on TV, on the news, are people that used to come to our place, to our house, um, and sleep there, and stay over for a couple of days. Um, Umama would cook for them, because obviously they are sleeping there. Um, and now they pretend as if they don't even know Umama. <clears throat> I am very disappointed in them. Um, and I'm very disappointed in the fact that I know who killed my father. I know that he stays two hours away from Cradock. Um, which is in Port Elizabeth. No one is doing anything about it. He, his children got to see, he got to see his children grow up. His children got to have a father. Probably by now he has grandchildren. Um, he's there with his grandchildren. His grandchildren are there with him. And life is just going on for him. Like nothing happened. Um, yet I'm in Craddock. When I want to see my father, I have to go to the graveyard. When I want to speak to my father, I have to go to the graveyard. Go speak to a stone. That's written for Talat died, born this date, died this date. And it's our belief as black people that. The best time before Pumilanga. So I have to wake up before sunrise to go speak to my father. Yet Nanaga Eric and Ozofuka, Pagama Epiti, and by Rumin Katataki. I would have no Tataki and Clay from Tatano Tataki. And no one is doing anything about it. And it's very frustrating. If maybe Eric was in Canada, ne? I wouldn't mind. Or maybe even if he was in Johannesburg, I wouldn't mind. But Eric isn't right next door to Craddock. And no one, everyone is quiet about it. How come, I think, Tina, not just us, but also if family, for instance, or how come we've never really considered um, forgiveness? No? Forgiveness. <clears throat> how can you consider forgiveness to a person who is not prepared to tell the truth. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. This is a Ukanyela usiti ayinguwe oyibileyo iswekile 
ndibe mnandi kubona uqhaphile nansi sweke le qhaphe kuwe mnyone and this was can you bet kuba ngoku yandi qokisa mos ne it is the same thing o taylor it was proven ne ukuthi zange bayithetha inyani how can you we might not go around with a hanging heart but the thing is we cannot forget this thing because it's not over yet and even if they can be charged ne and just come go to court and tell what happened even if the magistrate can acquit them after they have told us what really happened that day maybe we will consider forgiveness e trc just brought um a little bit of a relief from the the stress and the anger that we had and because it has allowed us to be able to say what we were thinking what we were feeling ne uh it made it a little bit lighter than it used to be before because i could tell you about myself deep down i knew that my husband was killed by the state securities but i could not go out to a magistrate or to a policeman and say look i know the special branch is involved in the killing of my husband because they would have like locked me up only for saying that but when trc came i would easily go there and tell my story and 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 tell my feeling and tell them how do i feel and what do i think who have killed my husband so the trc has like really brought a lot of relief honestly speaking but the the the, the thing lies now within the amnesty side the amnesty side the amnesty hearing side it lies there because the trc could make it possible that people could come out and say look i'm eric taylor ne i have killed fort kalata but the problem is eric taylor did not tell the truth and say what happened who who authorized them to do these killings they are hiding away this upper person or upper people who have instructed them to do what they did that is the problem that we are sitting with because eric taylor as an ordinary policeman would could not go and decide by himself to go and kill such high profile people he was instructed by higher authority to do that and that is where the problem is you see i'm going to come back to this yet again though we the anc government we, i think all of us agree that the death of 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 data was quite instrumental mm. in 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 getting us to the point that we are today but yet this very same government the very same people that were fighting alongside of data have now themselves essentially turned the back on or on, on data the way that i see it because they are now the ones that are not prosecuting abu eric they are not they are now the ones that are making sure that these very same people who they know where they are are not being brought in front of a court for them to be prosecuted for their crimes 
uh, should we should our anger not be directed towards uh, the fellow comrades? That is what I was trying to 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 say earlier, Lukayo. That these people have made themselves now comfortable ne, in the freedom. They have now forgotten about the people who have also brought the freedom. Ne? Sometimes when I at home, I will sit there and think for myself and analyze this thing and say, maybe the people who are in authority now, our people ne? who are now in authority, they think that those people have died. We are now enjoying the freedom. Let us just forget about them. And their families will not come and confront us with those things. And at times I would think that we also, we are too quiet. We have left them to get away with murder because it is murder that is, they are trying to get away with. They are like killing us alive because we know for a fact that they know that those men who have killed our husband have never been prosecuted. They know for a fact, but they set on it and we are also leaving them to set on it. I remember at one stage when David Forbes was trying to gather information about the death of the Craddock Four. David Forbes came to my house and he asked for permission to do this thing. We agreed. And while David Forbes was busy with these things, they were trying to deny him getting information of the TRC, of the, the information uh, about the Craddock Fall. And he applied and he fought to get this that. I remember that day, people from Pretoria from the offices of the prosecutor in Pretoria, and what is it called, NPA? NPA. What? NPA. People came there, Lukan, specially to credo to come and, and like stop us not giving U David the information as if they were going to do something or there is information that is going to let out that they are going to use against these people. Ne? And, I mean, nothing happened after that. You remember at one stage I was here in Cape Town. I had to flew back to, to, to Johannesburg from Cape Town. Only to sit there in an inquest that was held around this credo for case. Should they prosecute? Should they not? You know, such things. And nothing happened. And recently, three, two years back, people were coming to my house investigating about this case and nothing happened to that. What are they scared of? What are they hiding? What is going on? Why can't we know what is going on? If they had to pay, if our husbands had to be the ones that have paid the price to get this freedom that we are in, then they must let us know. They can't leave us in the dark. They must let us know if that was the decision that was taken that our husbands' lives have to pay for the freedom that they are enjoying today, then they must let us know. That is what we want. 
Wako waibona pindu nje. Ikesi nga ambili ndao. Ayiko lord. Eno eritela baya pila bako na bala pipay. Wakibego kutitu. And everybody knows who did these things. A lot of these people are still alive. I want the truth. <coughs> um, as hard as it might be, or as hurtful as it, 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 it might be, um, But that is what I want. Eric did a horrible thing. And I could never forgive him for that. Just like Umama, I would also like to know the truth. Why did he kill him? And how did he kill him? Did he torture him? Or did he just make it quick and painless? I would like to know those things. Maybe then I would stop being angry. Maybe then I would stop hurting because I hurt. I hide it very well so that Umama doesn't see. Because Umama Naya, she also hurts. But I hurt a lot. But the anger takes over everything that I have. I can't be happy for long. Then I get angry again. And the only person that I can take out my anger on, Umama. I can't forgive Eric. I'll never forgive Eric. The people that she, she talked or she talks about um, that are now in, in, in government um, that I see on TV, on the news, are people that used to come to our place, to our house, um, and sleep there, and stay over for a couple of days. Um, Umama would cook for them, because obviously they're sleeping there. Um, and now they pretend as if they don't even know Umama. <clears throat> I am very disappointed in them. Um, and I'm very disappointed in the fact that I know who killed my father. I know that he stays two hours away from Cradock. Um, which is in Port Elizabeth. No one is doing anything about it. He, his children got to see, he got to see his children grow up. His children got to have a father. Probably by now he has grandchildren. Um, he's there with his grandchildren. His grandchildren are there with him. And life is just going on for him, like nothing happened. Um, yet I'm in Craddock. When I want to see my father, I have to go to the graveyard. When I want to speak to my father, I have to go to the graveyard, go speak to a stone. That's written, for Talada died, born this date, died this date. And it's our belief as black people that the best time before So I have to wake up before sunrise to go speak to my father. Yet Nanaga Eric and Uzo Fuga Pagama Epit. I am by rooming at Tataki. I would have no Tataki and play from Tatawaki. And no one is doing anything about it. And it's very frustrating. If maybe Eric was in 
Canada. Ne? I wouldn't mind. Or maybe even if he was in Johannesburg. I wouldn't mind. But Eric isn't right next door to Craddock. And no one, everyone is quiet about it. How come, I think, Tina, not just us, <coughs> but also if family, for instance, yeah, yeah, what go anyway? Oh, yeah, what cloudy? How come we've never really considered um, forgiveness? No? Look at you. How can you consider? forgiveness to a person who is not prepared to tell the truth. This is a good one. When I will be a sweet girl, a kaya, this is a good thing. We will be a sweet girl. We will be when we can hear that we sit. I am going. And it is the same thing. O Taylor, it was proven. How can you? We might not go around with a hanging heart, but the thing is, we cannot forget this thing because it's not over yet. And even if they can be charged, ne, and just come, go to court, and tell what happened, even if the magistrate can acquit them after they have told us what really happened that day. Maybe we will consider forgiveness. No, I'm sorry, I could never forgive Eric Taylor. Why not? Um, you know that we didn't have the easiest upbringing. Oh, Mama had to struggle from day one. After our father's death, um, she struggled with me because I was also a sick baby. And she had to do it all alone. She had to raise three children, a 10-year-old, a four-year-old, and a newborn baby at the age of 26. Um, she had to be a mother and a father. She had to raise a son all by herself, which is about that at every corner, it would have been very easy because both parents would have been there. But umama, who hang a book that, when you have a as police, at the age of 26, four years ago, I was 26 years old. I wouldn't have managed it to raise three children. Bye.